this is take two of me doing this video again because I fucking lost the main video. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be diving into a very important topic, the issue with content creators crossing boundaries with their younger audience. This is something that's been on my mind lately, especially with the recent discussions of Mr. Beast and Chris Tyson. While I won't be discussing the specific case as YouTube may or may not have been striking down some channels, I wanna talk about the broader topic, which is where some creators are inappropriately talking with minors. Let's start by talking about what creators are actually doing. Many content creators build a large following, which this is great until you realize that a good portion of some of these fan bases are younger fans. Here's the problem. Some of these creators will start having conversations that are completely inappropriate with these minors. Whether it's in the DMs, emails, or even in the comment section, these interactions can go from something completely innocent to something much more concerning. It's important for creators to remember that they have a responsibility to keep things appropriate and respectful. Getting too personal or talking about these inappropriate conversations is just a big no-no and should not even be happening. Luckily, some of these people have suffered some consequences. However, most people, it, it, it's they get a slap on the wrist and they go about their day. I do want to give some examples of creators that I have followed. I no longer follow them just because of, for the reason of this video. The first person I want to talk about is Alex, who is the creator of Yandere Simulator. Recently, there are some serious allegations against him, including grooming a minor. These accusations have significantly ruined his reputation and has caused many people to stop supporting his project. Alex claimed that the allegations were taken out of context. Now we're going to go through some of the clips from his apology video. This was re-uploaded as he took his video down. So I will link the whole apology video in the description down below. So let's get started. The accusation is that I attempted to groom an underage fan of my game. I will take accountability and admit that I did discuss inappropriate topics with a fan. She let me know right off the bat that she was 16, but I didn't see any problem with that. When I was 16, I had online friends that were in their 20s and 30s, so it just didn't feel weird to me. So you didn't think to stop these conversations and say, yo, this is outside of my realm. We should not be talking about this. I don't feel comfortable. If this is a topic you want to talk about, go talk to your parents. Like, I mean, I don't recall what all his conversations were, but you get the concept. He had a kind of adult sense of humor and Every now and then she would bring up a topic or ask a question that wasn't really appropriate. When this would happen, I wasn't entirely comfortable with it, but I rationalized to myself that it was no big deal and just kept talking with her. Why didn't you say this makes me uncomfortable? I don't want to talk about this. If you mentally thought that this was making you uncomfortable, you should have voiced it instead of keeping it to yourself. So with the YouTuber apparently instructing the girl on how to steer our conversations in an inappropriate direction. Yeah, so we'll talk about the YouTuber in question in a moment. Our discussions got pretty weird. I wasn't comfortable with it and I tried to express that, but like an idiot, I just went along with it anyway. From what I recall, you did not try to express that. I feel like it's worth mentioning that a lot of the remarks I made only sound bad when they're out of context. Even when they are in context, they are bad. Don't talk about it. Honestly, the details are unclear. We did get some sides from the victim, but then things just started getting muddled, so we're not quite sure what exactly happened there. Because at some point, she started to record our conversations just in case I turned out to be some kind of predator. She showed our conversations to a YouTuber, and the YouTuber decided, yep, this guy seems like a groomer. We need to expose him. So speaking of the YouTuber in question, there is a person known as Ali. We'll talk about this blurb that the victim put out. Alex says that, that this person was guided to report all these situations and record and start having conversations. I mean, you, you'll see what I mean. From what I've been hearing, it kind of sounds like the YouTuber started coaching the girl on how to manipulate me into saying things that would make me look bad, which wasn't what the girl wanted. But you don't have to just take my word for it. The girl has written a statement about the entire situation, giving her side of the story. I've put a link to it in the description below. He does highlight a part in his video about what what was going on. I'm not going to read the whole document. I don't even know if this confession's out on the internet, but 
What this says is, Ali coached me into being exactly what he wanted based on years of her online stalking along with a community dedicated to bringing him down. She used the same techniques that the FBI uses during sting operations. Curate a specific environment, build trust, lure in, take down. Allie disrespected my wishes when I wanted the video posted because it was an elaborate scheme to bring views back to her dead channel. Every person has faults, but dedicating multiple videos to someone's faults showing her true colors, she's manipulative, hateful, and absolutely not a trustworthy source of news. Many of the audio clips were cut up and put together, making him sound terrible, conversations that were not real. Taking the worst elements of someone's conversation, removing all the context, and putting things back together that sound extremely sexual towards a 16 year old, Allie tricked people into believing that he was a bad person to save his dying YouTube channel. Again, I, I don't know, but anywho, let's just move on. It was getting so bad that the total amount he was getting on Patreon originally was over 5,000 from what I recall and it has dropped to I think about 1500 now. Just to clarify, I had all my numbers wrong. He did make 5000 at some point, but the current number has dropped significantly, and it was due to the fact that over periods of time that he wasn't completing his game, which is a completely different issue. I mean, I understand that it takes some developers a long time to come up with a game, but we're getting to the point that this is depressing and that he was getting help from people. Like, there are people that were putting out games like, uh, the guy that made Stardew Valley, I'm pretty sure he made all of that himself, including making all the assets. Now, I know it's a different story, you know, doing a pixel art game, but it can still be challenging especially doing it all by yourself. But look, he put out a completed game. Anywho, I am on this website, which apparently gives us statistics of how much people are making on Patreon. So looks like he's getting a pretty good stream of revenue. I like how it says the number of paid members went down by 17, but that he was making more money based on, I guess, the last 30 days. But the one I'm more curious about, which we'll do, is the last five years. Let's do last three years. So, let me see. Okay, so this stuff took place in what, like, end of last year? Okay. Did he actually go up? Huh. It's like people have no faith in him and then like numbers are going up, but at some point he was making 5,000. Yeah, at some point, yeah, his top number was like 5,000, which is a lot. And that was in pretty early on when he was accepting money for this. And as you can see, it just started dropping when people started losing faith in him. Then we hit around, you know, we hit around this point and numbers are looking like they're going down and they drop again huh i have no idea and then they go back up and they're going back down so it's a whirlwind but yeah i just wanted to clarify how much money he was actually making looks like i was a little off but it looks like it was going up and down the way how other youtubers were making it seem like that he was making a lot of money and then a lot of people just kind of dropped him from Patreon. I know that some people were dropping him, which I would too. Regardless of the specifics, this situation has cast a long shadow over his work and highlighted the need for accountability. Honestly, this made me reconsider supporting his project. Not that I actually gave him physical money. I know a long time ago I used to play his game, but I mean, it's been years. Which brings me back to my other point. Please finish your game, Alex. It's been a decade and it's not done. Next, we have Colleen Bollinger, AKA Miranda Sings. For those of you who don't know who she is, she is a popular person here on YouTube. As I previously mentioned, she was known as playing a character called Miranda Sings who like wore this lipstick and kind of spooky looking. I say spooky, but she was known for like being like this quirky character. And I'm not sure what she's up to in recent years, but it seems like over the years she's been getting kind of busy with stuff. I mean, you can tell based on the topic of this, of what I'm referring to. <laughs> she was also accused of having inappropriate interactions with her fans who were also underage. Apparently she was also accused of grooming. The details are a little muddled right now, but all I know is that she was accused of chatting with minors in a very inappropriate way 
This came to light when former fans had spoken up about receiving inappropriate messages from her. Then this led to significant backlash on social media. And you know what she did in response? Instead of just doing like an apology video like everybody else, and her her team said, don't talk or say anything until we have reviewed the situation pretty much. She does a 10 minute video on YouTube with her ukulele called the Toxic Gossip Train and starts singing about it. Pretty much she just sang about the controversy and doesn't even apologize. And she barely even spoke about the controversy to begin with. So, and then she had the audacity to upload it to Apple Music or iTunes. Now we are going to look at some of the clips from her apology video. Again, loosely, quote, apology. And let us begin. So, no. <laughs> you say it's not true, then pull the receipts. Did you just delete all the evidence? Up next is her famous toxic gossip train chorus. All aboard the toxic gossip train. You're chugging down the tracks of misinformation. The toxic gossip train. You got a one way ticket to manipulation station. Then. What happened? You're saying it's misinformation, then what happened? Currently, all you're telling me is that it's misinformation, but there's no proof. Uh, hi everyone. I've been wanting to come online and talk to you about a few things. Um, even though my team has strongly advised me to not say what I want to say, I recently realized that they never said that I couldn't sing what I want to say. So. You should have listened to your team and just not do whatever this train wreck is. No pun intended. Today I only want to talk about the facts. So, I hope that you'll be willing to listen. Okay, so what are the facts? Show me proof. Many years ago, I used to message my fans, uh, but not in a creepy way like a lot of you are trying to suggest. It was more of a loser kind of way, where I was just trying to be besties with everybody. It's kind of like uh, when you go to like a family gathering, you know, and there's a weird aunt there who keeps coming up to you and going like, hey girl, what's the tea? And you're like, ugh. Um, that was me. But in group chats with my fans. It was weird. Ew. I don't like that analogy. I've poured my heart out to you and because of that I feel like I'm talking to my friends, but in the beginning of my career, I didn't really understand that maybe there should be some boundaries there. There were times in the DMs when I would overshare details of my life, which was really weird of me. I haven't done that for years, you see, because I changed my behavior and I took accountability. I like how she recognizes that she should have set boundaries and that's something I do like from her video. Alex from Yandere Simulator didn't really do that, saying, yeah, I should have set up boundaries, you know, this was completely wrong, it was just, I don't know, he, he's trying to point the blame at everybody else, saying, yeah, the YouTuber tried to manipulate the victim to manipulate me into putting me in these uncomfortable situations. It kind of sounds like the YouTuber started coaching the girl on how to manipulate me into saying things that would make me look bad. This is over the internet, not in person. I can understand in-person interactions can be very hard to get out of. This was over the internet. How is it hard? Say no. I feel like I can already hear the comments on this video. She's gaslighting, manipulating. Oh, she's a narcissist and a rat. I would never make a mistake like that. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that all of you are perfect, so please criticize. You act like you made some, like, really bad dark joke or something and now you're being cancelled over it and you're like oh i'm sorry i shouldn't have done that no i know you wanted me to say that i was 100 percent in the wrong well i'm sorry i'm not gonna take that route of admitting to lies and rumors that you made up for clout but you're wrong uh i also wanted to take a minute to talk about that girl miranda sings you know the one yeah, her. Uh, she's PG-13. It says that on my website, and it's always been that way. And that's why you won't find my videos on the YouTube Kids app. So she brings up her character, Miranda Sings, 
I don't know if it says anywhere that it is PG-13, but I don't think any of the allegations were talking about her Miranda Sings content. It was just more about her and her questionable stuff. The only thing I've ever groomed is my two Persian cats. I'm not a groomer. I'm just a loser who didn't understand I shouldn't respond to fans. And I'm not a predator, even though a lot of you think so, because five years ago I made a fart joke. Yeah, just the video keeps getting worse and worse. If you guys are interested, the video is still up, so I posted a link down in the description down below if you guys just want to see the 10 minute train wreck. Anywho, that will conclude this segment of Colleen. I have not many other words to say other than why. But I think she I think she takes the cake for one of the worst apology videos and creative apology videos. There's no fake tears or just trying to come out and say, hey, yeah, this is what happened. Anywho, on to the next person. Anyways, so the last creator I do want to speak about, which he's kind of more of in a niche community, so he's not well known, but he almost had half a million subscribers, so he was kind of well known within the community I'm about to speak about. Anyways, so the third creator I want to talk about today is Sawtooth Waves, who is also known as the Burning Ocean. He was known for creating content within the My Little Pony community. I think he did a lot of theories and did some songs on and off, which some of the songs were not bad. He too also faced allegations of grooming a minor, however the situation gets a little more complicated, but still technically speaking it's a situation I just want to discuss, but then eventually crossed into an inappropriate territory. I'm just going to run you through a quick summary of what Sawtooth Wave said. I will post a link to his channel down below, which under his community tab, he does talk about his full story, and he also links the Instagram page to where the girl did leak everything. Again, I'm not going to cover her side of the story, but you know what I mean. I think the pronouns are they. So we're just going to refer to Sawtooth Waves as they. I am so sorry if I end up misgendering them in this video. So they reflected on their past mistakes, which involved an inappropriate relationship with one of the younger fans, aka the victim in this situation. They described it that it started from a position of power as a content creator, and they kind of failed to recognize the inherent imbalance in their interactions with the fans, particularly with this individual, which they met online back in 2017. Initially, their conversations were innocent, but then over time, they started developing romantic feelings and the relationship became increasingly inappropriate. They did set boundaries against explicit content, but their actions, including role-playing, did cross some of those lines. It was more of that like their characters were role-playing, but not themselves specifically. And at the start of it, it was just like kissing and hugging. Again, don't do that with your fans. Sawtooth did acknowledge that their behavior was reckless and inappropriate, which led to a significant emotional harm. They did mention that they thought at the time that they had good intentions and not causing the victim any harm. Now they understand the power dynamic at play and that the abuse that did occur. Despite initial remorse, they continue to communicate with the victim, believing that they could still be a positive influence in their life. Eventually, the relationship evolved into a long-distance relationship, but it ended due to the unhealthy dynamics that had been established early on. Sawtooth pretty much acknowledging the long-term damage that they caused by maintaining an unhealthy connection with this fan during their crucial development years. They expressed regret for not dismantling the relationship sooner understanding now that their continued involvement was a misuse of power. Sawtooth then says the lasting impact their actions have had on the victim who is still doing with the consequences. Then they went on to say that the victim had chosen to make their story public, which is a decision that Sawtooth supports, acknowledging that it was necessary for their healing process. Sawtooth then asks to respect the victim's privacy and to refrain from defending them, emphasizing that the responsibility for the harm lies solely on them and not the victim. Then they go on to kind of apologize to those who have been hurt by the news, including other creators they've worked with, and acknowledge that the damage their actions have caused to the community. So pretty much in response of the situation, Sawtooth pretty much took several steps to distance themselves from their public persona. They decided to leave YouTube indefinitely and removed all their videos from public view. However, you can find most of their videos on YouTube still. Other people have re-uploaded their content. They have closed down their YouTube server and deactivated their YouTube Discord account. Then they also shut down their Patreon offering refunds to those who regret supporting them and will be closing all direct messages on all platforms. 
Then Sawtooth went on to apologize to everyone that was affected, especially the victim. The part that gets me is where I say this situation's a little complicated was that when they started talking and having interactions, he had just turned 19 and she had turned 15. And when you think about it in the context of if they were in high school, he was just a senior that got left behind or whatever the case is, and she was maybe like a sophomore and they were going out with each other, that this would have been a little more acceptable than it being an internet thing. And it's just interesting to think about from that point of view. Again, I'm not saying it's okay to even cross any lines with your audiences like that, but he should not be considered a PDF file. That's what we'll call them. Unlike uh, Mr. Alex, if he, you know, <laughs> uh, different story. I mean, it's not like he is some 30-year-old man talking to a 13-year-old. But regardless, it shouldn't have happened. I'm not saying that it's fine. Even if some situations are borderline or somewhat unclear, it's better to err on the side of caution and avoid any interactions that could be perceived as inappropriate. This really emphasizes how critical it is for creators to be mindful of the power dynamic and the relationship with their fans, especially younger ones. So what can we learn from these situations? First and foremost, creators have a huge responsibility to make sure that there are boundaries with their audience, especially the young ones. It is okay to respond to positive comments or emails or DMs, but it's important to not get too personal or too friendly with the minors. Now, if you're a minor content creator, you do you, but this video is not for you. I'm talking about you 30 year olds talking to 13 year olds. That doesn't sit right. My personal rule is quite simple. If you are under 18, I will not treat you like an adult or cross any lines that might be considered questionable. I will treat you with respect, but I will keep things professional and appropriate. It's crucial to maintain a clear line between creator and fan to avoid any misunderstandings or inappropriate situations. Even if some cases seem suspicious or borderline, there should be no conversations between creators and minors that cross into the inappropriate territory. As a community, we all have a role to play in creating a safer online community. If you are a creator, Always consider the impact of your actions and be mindful of the age of your audience. Setting boundaries isn't just about protecting yourself. It's about respecting your audience and creating a safe space for everybody. For my viewers, it's important to be aware of the content you are consuming. It's also okay to speak up if you notice something that doesn't feel quite right. Well, I know this video is not going to do anything. It's just kind of good to keep the conversation going and hopefully this will reach people and Hopefully it will keep people mindful of what their actions are and who they're viewing and to do research sometimes. Like if you see that people are talking about your favorite creator in a very negative light, it is good to do research and see what it's all about and kind of make your own conclusion. So let's have a conversation in the comments. So what is your thoughts on this? I mean, do you guys have any ideas of things that we could do to spread more awareness and keep people aware of what's going on? Are parents even aware that all this stuff is going on? Like if their child is talking with a creator, like are their parents aware of what these kids are up to? Now, the last creator spoke about Sawtooth Waves. The person's mother was aware that something was going on, but I don't know if she knew the specifics per se. Anyways, thank you for watching my video. I will be coming out with more rant videos, so feel free to like and subscribe if you feel like it. If not, it's cool. I'm just here to make videos. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Adios! Oh, so you guys like my background? Many content creators do create a chicken nugget. This is my cute, adorable boyfriend. Say hello. Say hello. <laughs> you can go now. Be gone, thought. Yo, boop, ba-doop, boop, ba-doop, ba-doop, boop, boop, ba-doop, boop, ba-doop.